Hi guys, it's Kaylee June and today I'm going to be doing a skin retouching tutorial in Photoshop. So to start off with, uh, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the tools that we tend to use when retouching in Photoshop. And they are the healing tools just over in this panel over here. So we have the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool and the patch tool. So you can use pretty much any one of those tools to uh, edit skin or retouch photos. Um, today I'm just going to show a really basic tutorial on how to do some high-end retouching which is a little bit more for fashion images obviously. First off I'm just going to demonstrate how these tools work. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this layer so we're not working on the background image so it's not um, destroying any quality or anything like that. So First off, we'll click on the spot healing brush tool and I'll just show you what that does. All right, so I mean, this model has pretty good skin already, but what we really want to do is just clean it up a little bit and make it more, uh, a little bit more even because a lot of high end retouching involves smoothing out the skin and just making it look pretty much perfect. <laughs> okay, so, so the, the aim is not to make her skin really smooth or really unnatural because that can just look yuck um, so we just want to clean it up a little bit so with the spot healing brush tool basically all it does is and, and all these tools sample so what they do is they sample other areas of the skin and wherever you click it sort of replaces that area with the sample so let me find just a spot that I can use this on. I won't do this one here because it's a freckle. I usually like to keep freckles, moles, anything that sort of stands out on the model's skin. Otherwise, it just comes off looking unnatural. This little bit here, I think that might be dust from my camera sensor. But anyway, just to just as an example, all you have to do with the spot healing brush tool is just click on the spot and it will sample another area of the skin nearby. So, yeah, that's pretty simple. It's, yeah, I'll just do it on some other ones. Yep, so that's a pretty simple tool to use. Another one is the healing brush tool. This is similar to the spot healing brush tool, but I would probably use this for maybe large areas of skin because I find it's better at, at sampling. It's not so much just for one small little dot if that makes sense like I said it's very similar to the spot healing brush tool all you have to do is click alt or alt just on the keyboard and basically choose the area that you want to be sampled so this area close by I will choose just here and I'll just go over that and you can keep sort of sampling if I think it's good to mix up the skin texture a little bit and not just have it all from the same area so that's basically what that does okay and third is the patch tool so the patch tool I don't tend to use a lot I used to when I was first starting out with retouching um, I'll actually show you what it does first so just I used to use it a lot on like under eye marks and, and bags and things like that. So basically that's what it does. You, you can basically choose the amount of area, select it to be sampled. Um, and you can sort of go over it as many times as you like. I don't personally like using this tool much anymore. I just prefer the other method. Um, and a method that I do use is actually a frequency separation, which is what I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. And that's a little bit more involved than just using these tools. But yeah, um, the patch tool, I probably wouldn't use all that much. Like I said, I used to, when I was first starting out, just kind of like just do this all over the skin and it makes it look a bit blotchy and pretty uneven so it kind of defeats the purpose of skin editing in general I think but I mean there are ways you can use it that can look you know natural and you just need to be you know particular with how you use it 
All right, so there is actually another tool you can use for skin editing. I don't tend to use it a lot, but it is the clone tool. So it's very similar to the healing brush tool, although it's you can basically use this on anything in the image. Like, I'll show you what it does. You just click Alt, ALT again on the keyboard, choose the, the area that you want to be sampled, and then, you know, go over it like that. Obviously, the opacity is too high on that. You can always bring it down, and then, you know, so you can do that too, but I don't tend to use the clone tool a lot doesn't always come off looking great um, but anyway so that's what the three tools do and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to do frequency separation and that's the method I use, I use like most of the time with my images uh, it's just a really good way to not have any destructive elements within the photograph it still keeps the skin texture which is what I love about it I love skin to have texture in the photographs like I don't like anything looking too smooth or or you know fake <laughs> um, but anyway I'll just go back to the original image so we won't have any layers so basically frequency separation you can download uh, different actions online for them um, for frequency separation I just have a simple one by Elena Jazik Jazik I'm not quite sure I think she's a, a fashion photographer but um, she has a free one up for download. So yeah, and I find it's really good. Really, really good for skin editing. Okay, so basically all we do with the actions is we just click on the one we want and press play. Make sure the image is flattened first. So we'll just say OK to all of these because these settings are OK. And then invert add. OK. And it's okay too. And okay, there's a lot of okay's you have to press before the action's complete. But it is complete now. So as you can see over in this panel over here, it's got the folder and then it's got a high layer and a low layer. So what the high layer is, I'll just show you and I'll just turn this low layer off. It's the skin texture. And I'll turn the background off as well. This is what the layer is. It's, it's like a high pass. And as you can see, the texture is there. That's all the really detailed parts of the image. So we'll just turn these back on. And I'll turn the high layer off. There we go. So this is the low layer that we're looking at now. And this is a blurry layer or blurred layer. And what it is, is it's more for the tones of the photos. And it's really good... Um, to kind of even the color out a little bit in the image. Okay, so I'll just turn both of them back on for a minute. I like to generally work on the low layer first because that will that's really good for uh, editing out large blemishes or large red spots and that will usually get rid of the color and then I'll go into the high layer and then edit the texture of the skin. So we'll just click the eye on the high layer so we can't see it it's not visible and we'll go back to the low layer and the tool I use for frequency separation is the healing brush tool so it's the same thing as I was saying before you just press ALT alt on the keyboard select the area you'd like to be sampled and then just kind of like click over the spots I like to kind of do that uh, you know a few times I don't like to use the same sampled area because that doesn't always come off looking great it can look very fake so we'll just keep sampling some different areas so this really helps to even out skin tone I just find it's one of the best ways to do it I was actually taught how to use this action by Jessica Kobesi so if you want to go over to her channel at any time I would definitely recommend it she has some very helpful tutorials that you can watch so I tend to like spend a few quite a few minutes uh, sometimes longer than a few minutes on the skin editing 
on the frequency separation action. Right. So this will just take a few minutes just to clean it up a little bit. Obviously, I mean, you can spend all day doing this and, you know, make her skin look, you know, <laughs> just absolutely flawless. But I just want to show you just a basic retouching method. All right, so we're getting there. Just going to be relatively quick with this. I chose a studio image to um, just to show you the, the method on because it's a little bit easier. I mean, I don't, you know, if it's a full body shot or if it's natural lighting, a lot of the time, you know, I don't really spend this much time doing the skin editing or retouching. It just, but yeah, uh, studio. Studio shots tend to uh, be more focused on the skin. M not necessarily studio shots, but more beauty shots than anything else. Tend to be very focused on the skin. And that's when you need to sort of really make it look fantastic. Not that it isn't fantastic already, but we just need to smooth out a few things. Okay. And if you'd like to check how it looks, you can always just click... The eye on the high layer just to see and I mean I'll just go back to my history panel take a snapshot and go back to the original image so already just by working on the low layer that's what it looks like so you've kept the texture this is why I really like this action because it does keep the texture you know untouched unless you you know want to edit out a few little things which I probably will in a minute uh, but yeah I mean that's why I love this action so much <laughs> All right, so I think I'm done with the low layer. Actually, I'll just smooth out a couple of things there. All right, and we'll go into the high layer now. So we'll make sure we select that and press ALT, Alt, and then just get rid of a few of the little bumps that we can kind of see that are standing out. I don't like to work on this layer too much because it is the, the texture layer and I like to keep, as I said, I like to keep the texture. Um, that was a little bit much, but yeah. Alright. So we'll just take another snapshot and go back to the beginning. So that's the original image. And that's what we've got it to with the frequency separation. So, as I said, definitely one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. It just keeps the natural look of the skin. Um, that's usually not where my skin editing or retouching ends. I usually go on to do some dodging and burning. But I'll probably talk about that in a later tutorial because that's just... You know, this is probably complicated enough for people that haven't done a lot of skin retouching. And yeah, I'll touch on that later. But this is pretty much what you do with the healing tools. And they're not really hard to use. But yeah, so that's the end of the tutorial, guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any requests that you have for tutorials, just email me or comment in the comment sections below. That's probably easier. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. Bye.